Okay, so next up we have Irina. Um, so she has worked with Python for a decade in multiple roles ranging from manual testing to QA team lead and Python development. She currently works at Cloud Linux. Hi, Irina. And she loves mentoring beginners and speaking about automation technology. So Irina, what else do you like in addition to well-covered tests and well-tested automations? So monitoring, of course, and I will talk about it. So, so different type of monitoring uh, metrics and uh, in this particular case, uh, Sentry uh, as a real-time uh, error monitoring tool. So uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thanks, uh, EuroPython, for having me today. And uh, thank you all who I cannot see for joining this talk. It's very weird uh, to talk to myself and not seeing anyone, but I will try. Uh, so the topic that I want to cover, as I already mentioned, is uh, Sentry, and uh, it is a tracking software. Uh, for web services and applications. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, Sentry's motto that they displayed on their main page uh, was uh, software errors are inevitable, chaos is not. And I think uh, it is a very good illustration of what uh, the purpose of Sentry is. So it gives you a conf confidence that your service uh, works the way you want it to. And if it's not, it shows precisely what is going wrong. And uh, I know that it sounds uh, like a silver bullet, but in many cases uh, it really is. And uh, I hope that uh, at the end of this speech you will agree with this uh, bold statement. So when I talk about Sentry Offline, I always ask uh, these questions. Uh, and look at uh, raised hands. So I know now I know I don't have such opportunities. So I will just tell you that uh, it is always less than a half of the audience raising their hands uh, to any of these uh, questions. Uh, and uh, uh, with each question, the number of raised hands uh, decreases. So. Uh, the reason I want to talk about Sentry so much uh, each time uh, is that very few devs know about it. And uh, uh, if they know about it, they don't want to use it uh, because they don't think that it is for free and they don't know that we can self-host it. And uh, so I want uh, to do something about it. Uh, so three of the last companies I worked for didn't have any real-time monitoring. The only way to know what's up with their services and if it's working correctly was to check logs. And uh, so in all three places, I suggested to integrate and start uh, using Sentry instead. And we eventually did. Uh, but at start, uh, nobody even heard about it. And when I said that it's a real-time monitoring, the answer was, uh, but why? Uh, we have logs. And uh, so don't get me wrong, uh, because this approach really works. But I also have to say that looking through thousands uh, uh, and uh, hundreds and thousands of lines of uh, logs uh, is uh, far from efficient. And during my speech, uh, I will try to prove uh, that Sentry is uh, better than logs because it, of its convenience. And uh, describe situations uh, when uh, logs won't help you and uh, Sentry will. So let's move to my uh, toy project. Uh, here it is. Uh, it is very simple. It is made with uh, uh, Flask framework, uh, SQLite and uh, USG server. And uh, as you can see, it is really very simple. So there is uh, one field uh, for user ID, one field for value we want to insert to our database and associate with this uh, user ID. Uh, this button add value send a post request with this uh, data user ID and uh, value. Uh, one button to get to send the get request and uh, find uh, uh, so get uh, the sum uh, for all uh, values associated with the current user ID and two dummy buttons uh, that do nothing, just uh, send, uh, the push some strings to our console log. Uh, we will use them later to show off Sentry. So let's start with uh, populating database with uh, some uh, values. 
and uh, let's add a couple of it a couple of it and we can see that uh, there are two post requests everything is okay and uh, let's check our uh, database uh, for this user and see that everything is okay everything was written to the database and uh, let's return to uh, the web and uh, now let's uh, try to get uh, the sum uh, for this user and uh, if we uh, send this get request we will get uh, the internal server error so 500 uh, error code and uh, let's go to our logs and uh, look at them and uh, here we will see that we have this uh, type error uh, so unsupported operand type for int and uh, mysterious row and uh, in general, this seems an obvious bug. However, uh, the problem is uh, that this message doesn't give us complete information about what was happening in the servers at the moment. So what is uh, the role, what uh, we tried uh, to sum up. And uh, the only information that we have here is uh, the location of where things went wrong. And let's compare it with uh, Sentry, uh, what we have uh, there. Uh, let's go here. So this is uh, the main timeline of uh, Sentry and its uh, project. We will talk about a little bit later. Now we just uh, refresh the page and uh, see uh, what is uh, the freshest uh, error here. And uh, here it is. Uh, so 68 seconds ago, this is uh, our exception. Sorry for big zoom. And you cannot see the message here. It's uh, just cut, but let's dive in. And uh, we will see that we have uh, lots of information inside. So, for example, there is a type exception, message exception, uh, uh, yeah, message exception, then uh, some information about uh, URL that invoke the exception, uh, then the, the version of browser and lots of other stuff. And then if we go uh, further, we will see the same stack trace that we have in our logs. Uh, but here is uh, the place where the cool stuff uh, starts. So we can uh, expand uh, each uh, frame and uh, see uh, local variables uh, and its values uh, that they have uh, on each uh, level. And here we can see that our uh, the variable uh, values have uh, uh, not a list of integers as we accepted, uh, expected, but a list of lists. And uh, this is uh, the problem that uh, the reason why we have the exception in the first place. So we, uh, Sentry helped us uh, to understand the reason of our exception uh, and uh, the reason behind the exact failure we had uh, without the need to reproduce the error. And uh, so when I was a newbie, and uh, even for a while when I wasn't, so exceptions horrified me, and uh, it was hard for me to understand them and uh, fix them, and it was eating up a lot of my time. And let's use this as a starting point and as an example and think about what I would do back then without Sentry. So probably I would start with checking values in the database. And we have seen, we've checked already that all are numbers. Uh, then I try to find out something on the internet and uh, we'll find some Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow page uh, that says so that the data coming from SQLite might be in some wrong format. Uh, then I will try to run service locally and try to print values coming from SQLite. But uh, what if I can't run it locally? And I would, uh, in this case, I would deploy the debug version to a test machine and then check logs there. And all this is uh, painfully slow. So uh, this could be uh, go harder and uh, worse uh, in case if an error was more complex and uh, if it involves user input uh, or if it's some unlucky uh, corner case which is hard to reproduce and happens rarely. So of course, uh, in, some, in some cases you can extract uh, param URL parameters uh, from your access log in case if it's query string. But what if uh, it is uh, JSON parameters, so they would uh, long gun. And in this case, uh, who will help us? It is Sentry. Uh, so uh, we, the only thing we need to do is extract outside data to a separate variable. 
and uh, you will see it in Sentry right after the exception occurs. And uh, here is uh, the bad uh, news uh, for one-line function lovers, uh, because it is really important to extract uh, data in a separate variable. So without these uh, variables, you won't be able to see this data in Sentry. So it's just uh, good for you. If you use Sentry, please uh, uh, use uh, variables, uh, because uh, it will make your reports uh, more detailed and will help you uh, better. So we've looked up uh, uh, the center event and realized that SQLite returns not a list, uh, but a list of tuples, and uh, let's fix it. I will just uh, uncomment a bad one, a good one, and comment a bad one, and uh, here is a good one, and you can see that I just uh, unpack uh, this list. And uh, let's uh, check that everything works fine in my project. Uh, show user count and yes, uh, everything is uh, good now. And uh, now let's change a user to another one and uh, try to show its uh, user count. Uh, and we have a problem again. So we again have internal server error again uh, 500. And uh, let's check our uh, logs one more time. And uh, we uh, have the same exception type and a slightly different message, but now this message is absolutely clear. So integer and string, and uh, it's obvious that there are some strings in our uh, list extracted from database. If we check uh, the database, we will see that, yes, here it is. We have the string uh, here uh, as uh, a value for this particular user. And uh, everything seems uh, clear, obvious, and very simple. And uh, why do I even bother you with this example? So there are several important uh, moments. So if we check uh, database uh, scheme, uh, so let me I'll get, uh, write it. Uh, we'll see an important few thing that uh, Val's value uh, must be integer. Uh, but SQLite uh, allows us to insert values with string type. Okay, so uh, did you know this? Uh, when I encountered problems uh, caused by this behavior, I didn't. And it was just like, I have no idea that such thing could uh, happen. I have a scheme, come on, what can go wrong? Uh, and, uh, here we come to the next slide. So there was an unexpected uh, SQLite behavior, uh, and uh, we always uh, don't know something about tools, and we always can have some problems that we uh, don't expect it. And uh, the next thing, always uh, users always uh, find a way to break a service. So there, for example, there will always be a user who inserts a string to a quantity input. And uh, in this particular case, uh, developers can easily prevent this exact case and defend their applications. But uh, there will always be a way to break your application and uh, someone can always uh, can find it. And uh, I separated these uh, two users uh, intentionally. So this is uh, the illustration of different user behavior. So in my toy project, uh, there are two users. Uh, in some test projects, there will be 10. And in production, there will be thousands, hundreds of thousands and more uh, of real users. And all of them will provide different inputs. All of them will use a service at a different time and with different frequency. And uh, some of them will make mistakes, some not. Uh, some of them read tips and insert data accurately. And uh, some will insert data immediately and in a way they think is right. And in the end, uh, an error could be rare and reproduced randomly and be associated with a small number of issues. It won't be visible in logs, but users will be disappointed. So they, for example, they won't sign up because there is a bug in the sign up window, or they won't buy goods because there is a bug in a cart. And uh, for all these situations, edge cases are critical uh, because uh, service loses real money in these cases. So even 5% of users who fail during their way to the pay button, uh, they become important. And uh, so these uh, rare bugs are important too. And uh, let's think uh, what's uh, the chance that these rare bugs uh, will be lost in logs. 
And here we come to the next slide, uh, the disadvantages of locks. And uh, the two main things uh, are, so the first, uh, uh, there could be several servers with logs with different environment and uh, no aggregation tool for them. So yes, I know uh, that there are lots of different solutions to aggregate logs, but for uh, there are uh, lots of different companies that have no aggregation tools for lo their logs. So for example, in the previous company, uh, where I worked, I had 70 machines and no aggregation tool. Uh, but even if you have five servers or even three machines, and there is, again, no aggregation tool to make it convenient, will you check uh, each one regularly uh, with each deploy, for example? So I can say for myself, no. Uh, check one, maybe two, everything is clear, and leave it. So however, the error could occur only on one machine, let's say 10 minutes, and uh, again, we uh, lose this uh, error. And uh, the second thing, uh, logs could be noisy. So you always have these uh, good errors. Uh, so expected ones, uh, for example, network hiccups or third parties uh, service and accessibility. Uh, such things uh, shouldn't be turned off. Uh, if there is no trustworthy monitoring, disabling these errors will make a developer blind and you don't know if a service is uh, al alive or not from the backend side, I mean, without uh, touching uh, the user interface, for example. Uh, so these are the reasons uh, why lots of people don't like to steer in logs. And these are the reasons why rare exceptions are lost. So it is cool if uh, there is a QA who checks user stories. It is cool if a user cares and writes a report. But often we have no QA and the user prefer prefers just to use a different service uh, without uh, the problem and uh, leave us. And uh, who will help us? Uh, Sentry. So let's go to the main Sentry page. Uh, so I mean uh, the main uh, uh, Sentry project uh, page. And uh, here is uh, the timeline with events that I mentioned before. So Sentry stacks uh, the same events and uh, places uh, new ones on top. So uh, here are two different groups. Uh, again, sorry for Zoom, but if uh, the Zoom won't be so uh, large, uh, you can see, you will see that these messages uh, differ. So here we have for row and here we have int. And this is the reason why uh, Sentry distinguish uh, these groups, uh, these uh, exceptions to different groups. And uh, uh, this uh, means uh, that uh, similar uh, exceptions, uh, similar errors, they will be in one place and uh, won't clog the feed. So you can see here that I have six events uh, for this type of error from my previous uh, rehearsals, and uh, they are all here in one, in one event group. So if you have 50 groups, uh, for example, uh, and uh, you still have lots of events that uh, clog your timeline, uh, you can mark them as ignored. Uh, here is the button. Uh, and uh, all they will disappear from your timeline and uh, uh, won't disturb you here, but all the information you need uh, will still be in logs uh, just in case, uh, but Sentry won't contain this noise. So you can uh, make your timeline clear and uh, clean uh, with only that errors that you need and uh, care about. And uh, let's go to the presentation. So here you can ask me about uh, notifications. So if uh, uh, Sentry will uh, send me notifications, uh, if Sentry will bombard me with notifications, because there could be lots and lots of errors. So uh, no, Sentry won't bombard you with notifications. Uh, Sentry send notifications only about new errors. And I want to emphasize this one more time that only new errors. I mean, if you already have a group of uh, the same errors, uh, the occurrence of a new member of this group won't trigger an email. So Sentry won't bombard you with uh, letters. And uh, it is possible to configure time intervals to aggregate error messages and events which will then be sent in one email. For example, over 10 minutes, over 30 minutes, over an hour. And uh, also, if you fix an issue, 
uh, it can be resolved in Sentry. So just uh, push uh, this uh, button here. Uh, so uh, this will first of all remove an issue from Sentry timeline with a fresh uh, refresh of the page because by default uh, uh, Sentry shows only unresolved issues uh, here and uh, so uh, you won't uh, see it after uh, after resolving it. Uh, and uh, secondly, if the same issue comes up again, uh, Sentry will send you an email uh, that there is a regression. So there are only two cases when Sentry sends you emails. So the first one, we have just new error, new event, uh, and the group just created. And the second thing, the second uh, moment, uh, we have resolved this issue and it comes up again and Sentry will tell you about regression. And uh, for super speedy notifications, Sentry can be integrated with your favorite team message service like Slack. And messages there appear instantly and are seen by the whole team. Uh, the same rules uh, as uh, with notifications as with emails. Uh, Sentry only notifies you about new groups or aggressions, and uh, they can be uh, so. Uh, mm, aggregators and all that stuff. So we can do all the same, but uh, just for instant uh, notifications. And uh, let's move further with presentation. So of course, uh, it is easy to turn Sentry into yet another dead log. And uh, um, so if you don't pay attention to it, uh, so while uh, there is a narrow su subset of uh, normal bugs, uh, which I mentioned before, it is very important to fix all the bugs which you catch with Sentry. Uh, but uh, you can say that what if there is a deadline coming up and if there is a critical issue with the user registration and we probably don't care about some parsing error once in every two hours. And yes, this is true. And uh, this is life. And there is a way uh, to not turn Sentry into a box cemetery when such situation happens. So uh, if uh, error groups have already been created, uh, there are no email notifications. Thus, no visibility for these errors. You should come exactly into Sentry and look at the timeline and see that there are some fresh events. Maybe I should work with them, but we know how it, how it works. Uh, so good practice uh, against that is to auto-resolve all errors in Sentry in several days after the first occurrence. So there is an option in project settings. You had a deadline and there was simply no time resolve and you get an email uh, in some time or when maybe it will be the moment when you have time for it. Then you got hundreds of emails notifications while on vacation, same story. And also you can use this resolve feature uh, for situations, for example, imagine Sentry caught uh, some strange hard to reproduce issue and which you, uh, you don't uh, think it's important right now and you don't want to investigate it, but you still want to know if it happens again and when and uh, how frequent it will be, so resolve it and uh, Sentry will let you know if it happens again. And uh, let's move uh, to the next slide. Uh, this is some conclusion here. Uh, it's not the last slide of my presentation. I have more to say, but I just want to sum up uh, some things here. So Sentry allows you to be notified about errors, errors instantly as soon as they occur. Uh, you don't need to crawl through the logs with tail plus grep and uh, you don't need to search necessary logs on different servers if you have no aggregation tool, and you won't miss uh, an important new error or aggression. So, and uh, one more time, please uh, clean uh, the bugs, fix them, and uh, use uh, auto-resolve for uh, the uh, events in Sentry. In this case, uh, Sentry will be a good uh, available tool and uh, not uh, deadlock uh, instance uh, no one cares about. So I hope at uh, the current stage, uh, Sentry already looks interesting to you. Uh, so let me tell you a few general things about it and uh, some facts about customization, deployment, self-hosting, and so on. So this is uh, the most important uh, slide uh, 
uh, and the most important part of Sentry. Uh, Sentry is uh, free. To be specific, you can use it uh, for free or by subscription. So I just uh, so it's not very obvious from the site. Uh, so it's common for someone who heard about Sentry but never used it to justify it by thinking, I need to pay for it, I won't use it because it is paid. So that's that's all, I won't use it. But uh, you don't. Uh, and uh, uh, there are different ways. And uh, paid subscription has some advantages. Uh, uh, and... Uh, what is the paid subscription? So with a paid subscription, you get the cloud service and uh, you are provided with a uh, uh, DSN uh, to Sentry, which works in the cloud instead of your service. And there is, uh, for me, uh, there is a problem with it. Uh, events are coming to Sentry Cloud with a significant delay uh, sometimes. So up to two to six minutes uh, from my personal experience. So I was trying to use the cloud deploy of Sentry when preparing for this talk for the first time. And it was often a waiting game until the event uh, hits Sentry. So I've deployed it locally. And uh, same story in production. So you've deployed a new version with a critical issue that uh, which of course you didn't know about. And uh, if your service is immediately torn apart by hundreds of uh, errors, these uh, two to six minutes are very important. If the issue is small, this time might be enough to fix the issue and redeploy a new version or just to roll back uh, the version and use the old, uh, the previous one. So while with the central cloud, you will only be notified after that time. So I prefer a self-hosted Sentry for my project. Uh, so it's really easy and won't take a lot of effort to do. There is a page in documentation and let me show it to you uh, about self-hosted Sentry. Uh, so there are very simple instructions uh, and uh, in previous years, in previous versions, I've uh, made my own Docker Compose file and uh, shared it uh, via my GitHub. Uh, but uh, during this year, Sentry made it. Uh, they made their own Docker Compose and now it's really three simple steps. So just check out repository, then run one command, run uh, another command and uh, profit. Uh, you have uh, uh, your own uh, self-hosted uh, Sentry. About load, uh, if you had a lot of events and don't want to think about uh, distributed Sentry, so use Sentry Cloud in this case with paid sub subscription. So it is the case when you need it and it is good to give uh, money to Sentry team because we all want to Sentry to live uh, and be with us. Uh, so, uh, but if you're Again, don't want uh, you. It is possible to configure la rate limits uh, in Sentry. Uh, then some events will be ignored, but it will guarantee that there won't be load issues in any case at all. So your choice uh, for those who just want to try Sentry out on some local pad project, but don't want to jump into deploying it locally. There is an option to use cloud version for free, and uh, now there is a button on the main page, uh, try for free. Uh, just register on the Sentry site and connect your project uh, to use it. Uh, you can use it for free if uh, the project has only one user and the number of events is less than 10,000 events per month. And it is actually more than enough uh, for many small projects. But just remember about uh, delays I was talking about. So. Uh, let's pretend that we deployed our self-hosted Sentry and registered to Sentry in the cloud. And uh, now let's look uh, how easy it is uh, to create a new project. So I need to go to just project page. And uh, here is the button, create project. And here is a bunch of different languages and frameworks that uh, Sentry supports. Uh, and uh, they uh, separated in uh, different groups. and. Uh, loss and loss of them. I think that uh, everyone can uh, find uh, its uh, own tool and instrument, but here we will use uh, Flask uh, and uh, several settings that you don't need at the moment. And I will uh, set a project name and uh, create project. And uh, Sentry is very nice. And uh, after creating a project uh, with exact uh, 
language and exa or exact uh, framework. Uh, Sentry will show us uh, this part of the code uh, that you need to add to your project to integrate Sentry. And uh, let's look at my project here. And this is the whole configuration that I have to integrate Sentry. The only thing that I need is uh, this variable with uh, descent to my project. And I can find it in uh, uh, in the settings of uh, this uh, project. So we go into project, then we go to settings, and uh, in the bottom of the page, we will get this client keys uh, DSN, and here is uh, this link that you need just copy and uh, use uh, in that uh, small snippet of code. So after you uh, did it, Sentry will catch all unhandled exceptions. And uh, also a killer feature. Uh, so I think this is the brightest star on the Sentry sky. Uh, so you can not only handle unhandled exceptions, but you can send events uh, to Sentry by yourself. So using logger error, logger warning, and uh, logger exceptions. Uh, I think this is one of the most amazing features of Sentry. In previous versions, it used to be adjusted separately and many people didn't know about it. Now, thanks for Sentry team, they uh, made it uh, work out of the box and uh, you can use it in the following cases. Uh, so why I think uh, this feature is so amazing and uh, uh, what uh, cases it covers and when it can make your life easier. Uh, so uh, the first thing is uh, uh, working with uh, third party services uh, via HTTP. Uh, so, for example, you want to show the weather forecast uh, in the corner of your main page and you are getting it, uh, so the data, the weather data, uh, get it from some other service. And uh, so you just need to put this block into try accept and uh, log it to Sentry. So what you get uh, with it, uh, there are several points. Uh, the first, you will know for sure if there are uh, 500s and uh, which ones, uh, which internal errors, and you can judge whether the third party service is stable enough for you or you need to start looking for an alternative. If that's uh, your own service, uh, it may highlight a bug in this service or a bug with integration and you can work with it. The, the second thing, you can validate responses from the third party service and uh, catch format changes or some inconsistencies which you uh, need to fix up on your site and you will know uh, about them immediately so not after some time when you will see that oh wow in my, on my page there is no weather now what's happened uh, let's, check, let's check logs and all that stuff so you will know about this uh, changes immediately then uh, it's easier to figure out, figure out uh, the reason of uh, invalid response from that other side. So when there is no error, just uh, the response is uh, the data that you get is not uh, something that you expected. So instead of, instead of spending hours trying to reproduce the issue, you can log and let us see actual parameters uh, the issue happened on. So for example, for our weather service, we might have received an empty response. And uh, the reason we've sent invalid coordinates. And if we only check in logs, we only see an empty response uh, dictionary, but it doesn't show why it is empty. And we can spend uh, lots of time trying to understand why. Here you will see these uh, parameters that you sent to, uh, to that side, uh, and you will see all oh, uh, parameters are invalid yeah, it's my problem, I need to do something about it. Then, uh, the second uh, uh, point, uh, the second example, is uh, that uh, there are cases when you know that in some places there will be unavoidable errors. And you know, uh, you, know, you know it for sure, and you just want to know how many of them and how often. So, for example, you are working with a partner which every night provides you with new data about their products and you are downloading them, uh, parsing, and uh, for each product you need to download an image to your storage. And you know from experience that some images will be unavailable and uh, you just want to know um, for sure how many. So, below 10 
can be ignored above 50 uh, maybe it's a good idea to ping partners and uh, maybe they even don't know that they have problems uh, then the third uh, thing uh, the cases with with uh, refactoring so you refactored some part of your service and uh, want to remove uh, some old code, but uh, you are not sure if it's not still being used somewhere, for example, dynamically. You can mark uh, such uh, deprecated method with a warning and uh, Sentry will tell you for a fact uh, if and where it's uh, been uh, used from. Uh, you didn't get any warnings for a month, uh, then perfect, uh, you can now remove this code and forget about it. So the similar example, uh, you deprecated some type of products or subscriptions at your service or change an API. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can mark old requests with warnings and see which of your clients still have or are still using obsolete requests and uh, you need to ask them to make changes on their site. So this is the part uh, where Sentry uh, is a way not to be afraid. So with uh, Sentry, uh, you won't be afraid to make changes in your code uh, because you can guard all these places and you will immediately have uh, the response if there are problems. And uh, the last uh, uh, point, uh, a sentry can be used to like some kind of uh, monitoring and statistics gathering. So we know that uh, there are lots of tools uh, about metrics, statistics and all that stuff. But uh, if you have no experience and you just uh, don't need to some great tool for it and you just need to uh, to collect some small bunch of statistics, you can use uh, sentry as uh, this tool. Uh, so you can add login of some variables there, get it to Sentry the same way that you are getting errors. And uh, such events uh, can be grouped uh, automatically, so you can manually group them. Uh, Sentry has this tool, just dive into documentation. Uh, and uh, you will have these uh, groups of different uh, events with uh, different counters and you will make, you could make uh, some decisions and uh, have some thoughts about it. Uh, and uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, so the front end. So now we are here at uh, Euro Python. Uh, but I felt uh, that it is important to mention uh, JavaScript and the front-end part as it is all interconnected. I know very few back-end developers who never ever touched uh, uh, front end in their projects, and it is important for back end uh, developers to at least understand and be able to monitor whether back end functionality is used by the front end correctly. And uh, so, here is uh, a little uh, part about front end. So, we've already talked a lot about uh, what Sentry can do on the back end side. So, let's have a look at how it can be integrated in the front end. So let's look at uh, our front-end code. So this is uh, the whole integration of Sentry to the front-end. Again, it is very simple and everyone can do it. You doesn't need to do any additional terrible things uh, integrating Sentry. So the same thing, initialize Sentry, add uh, the DSN and that's all. So you can use uh, the same DSN as for the back-end part if you want all the errors events in one Sentry project. Uh, but it, you can create another project for front-end errors only and separate them. So again, it is very convenient and you can adjust it the way you like. Uh, and uh, let's go to our project again. It will be the last demonstration of uh, real life demonstration. So let me clear everything. And uh, as uh, you remember, I've told about these two buttons uh, that they have, uh, they do nothing, just push uh, some uh, logs, some strings to console log, and it's true. And uh, now just uh, let's uh, choose uh, some user that we have known in database and uh, try to show the user count. And we will have uh, the exception here because uh, uh, so front end is broken because we try to get uh, the property that is uh, not available in our response. And if we look here in network, we can see that we have this request here. So we have request to our Sentry with some data. 
and uh, let's look uh, into our project uh, and uh, find uh, this issue. So here it is, uh, cannot read property sum of undefined, let's uh, dive in and uh, we will see uh, all the same uh, data. So type, message, uh, when occurred, uh, then some information about the client for front end. Uh, it is very important, uh, versions and all that stuff. Then the same uh, stack trace, it's uh, rather useless uh, for front end. Uh, but uh, here we have breadcrumbs and this is uh, the golden place because here we can see the whole history of what I was doing on the page. So I click in button add, I have the value 200, here is uh, what uh, uh, parameter and its values were. And uh, then uh, I have this uh, so console output uh, with uh, extra arguments and uh, all that stuff. I can see this uh, uh, string here and uh, so the idea, uh, you can uh, adjust uh, what is going on and uh, you can adjust the context that you will have uh, on the backside. So uh, what uh, context will send uh, to Sentry from your front end. And uh, you, so you will need to make it uh, manually uh, and uh, there is some work uh, to make it uh, better, but even out of the box, uh, these events are very useful because uh, uh, for example, you uh, deployed a new version of your uh, application and uh, you have a wave of uh, uh, errors from front end and it is the sign that something goes wrong. You need to maybe roll back and uh, investigate the problem. And uh, as I said, uh, with some effort, you can adjust uh, these events and uh, enrich the context and uh, get additional information. Uh, so uh, let's move to, this is all what I wanted to say about front end. So just use it. It is really important for both sides, back end and uh, front end. And now let's uh, summarize uh, what I've said here. So I think uh, that Sentry is extremely valuable and uh, necessary during development. So this is one of the first modules uh, you want to integrate into your project, new or old. And uh, if your team consists of developers and QA, there are less back and forth questions between them. And you as a developer don't have to constantly ask for more details, uh, ask your DevOps for access or copy of the logs, ask QA to add more details to the reported issue and uh, uh, ask uh, your support to get some extra tricky information from the client. So you have all that in Sentry. And uh, more importantly, uh, you have it there before it uh, reported to you. So you have an ability to fix an issue even before it is reported. And uh, because you have all the context uh, to reproduce and investigate it by yourself. And it is amazing feeling when you get the Sentry exception, you fix it. And after some time you get uh, the message from the support or from the manager that, oh, wow, we have a client that have this complaint. And you say, I've already fixed it, just perfect. So I hope that now you believe that Sentry is a good friend and assistant uh, to find bugs and deliver great and stable web services. So Sentry is an easy to integrate and even it's, it's out of the box form, uh, will, it will be irreplaceable. And uh, with some additional efforts, it gives you a great flexibility. And uh, so read the documentation. I'm far away from describe, description all the goodies of Sentry. Uh, so uh, there are lots of treasures in documentation. Please read it and please use Sentry. I hope and I believe that it will help you greatly. That's all for me. Thank you for listening. Uh, we do have a couple of questions, but since we're almost done, uh, you could take them in the breakout room. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Have a nice day and have a great conference. Thanks.